Welcome to Meet the Candidates, Brockton Community Access's forum for educating the voters for the Tuesday, September 17th preliminary election here in the City of Champions. I have a familiar face here today. I have uh, Representative Tony Branch, who's my colleague on the Southeastern School Committee, the host of the NAACP forum, mm -hmm. and involved in a few other things. Yes, welcome, a lot, Tony. A lot. Nice to see you. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Um, we're in the final yes. uh, days of the election. Um, the preliminary election in Brockton, which is the election right. that decides right. who the final two are right. to be in the mayor's race. You're running for mayor of the city of Brockton after the untimely passing of Mayor Bill Carpenter. Yes. Um, there are seven candidates in the race. Yes. Why Tony? Well, see, uh, that's a, actually a very good question. I thank you for the question. So I wasn't going to run for mayor of the city of Brockton. Uh, my intention was to uh, remain on the Southeastern Regional School Committee, but I received a, a few, more than a few phone calls uh, with, with respect to the office. I mean, people looked at the slate of individuals that were running and what they said um, it's, remains true today. They were looking for someone really to join the race, to talk about experience, talk about how uh, someone can bring in some private sector management background to the running of the city. But more importantly, they believed that they were invisible, that they had been invisible for more than just the term of, uh, of the Carpenter administration, but they had been invisible in this city for a long time. And one of the things that um, was consistent was, and this was not only, and I, I'm, so I'm, let me just push back on, uh, on one of the things that I've heard and I'm very disturbed about. I love the city of Brockton, and, and I don't think it's helpful uh, for candidates uh, to say that this race may be about race or ethnicity. Um, I don't think that it is. I think that clearly um, the issue around education and public safety and housing uh, uh, crosses uh, dimensions of race and ethnicity. Uh, a majority of the people that called me to run for Mayor Brockton actually are white. Um, and so I I'm kind of pushing back on people uh, on both persuasions that may be using the race card in this race. What this race is about, rent stabilization, public safety, public education. Uh, it's also about making sure that we support our seniors uh, through the Council on Aging. It's about us making a better Brockton. It's about us continuing to move the torch that uh, Bill had or Mayor Carpenter had forward. That's what this race is about. And, and that transcends, again, this issue of race and ethnicity, which makes me so uncomfortable, especially as being the chair of diversity for this city. Uh, so what I'm going to be, uh, my, my platform has been consistent with what people have asked me to do. I've looked at the Lopes case. Um, as, as a non-attorney, of course, and I think that that's something that we should settle. That's the largest legal liability that we have in the city of Brockton. Secondly, I've looked at um, how we got to the low case. We got to the low case because there were some issues of integrity and fairness. Uh, so we're looking to develop an office of professional development here in the city of Brockton, not only for our current employees, but also for the, the, the regular citizen, the regular Jack and Jill, to be able to come in and file complaints. The reason why we're trying to do that, Mark, is simple. Not only do we have the Lopes case to deal with, we have 20 plus cases in the federal district court in Boston that no one's talking about. If one or two of those juries, if that goes, if any of those cases go to a jury trial, if they come against us, the city of Brockton is officially bankrupt. Right. And what's frustrating me is that these are the conversations that we should be having uh, in this campaign season. And again, some of the decisions that have to be made can't be made by someone that's inexperienced and untested. And that's not a pushback. So let's get to experience. Yes. One of your opponents is talking about experience. Another candidate for counselor at large <laughs> yes. has a slogan about experience. It matters. Everybody brings different things to the table. That's true. Okay, that's true. so let's talk about what you bring to the table right. in terms of experience, in terms of your past career, right. and uh, how you would use it and shape it in the mayor's office. So I am a, a project manager. My, I currently even have my own uh, company that I'm consulting with now that do, we do this type of work. And what we do is, is that I'm a Six Sigma lean expert. What, we are want, what I'm looking to do is to look at every single process, not only in Brockton City Hall, but also in the school department to see what things are costing us, Bottom line, we want to connect just like the private sector does. Productivity to performance, performance to budgets. 
It's actually really just that simple. One of the things that I tell people with my human resources hat is that if you were sitting down interviewing for the job of mayor, I posted that job, what would you be looking for? You would be looking for someone that's have senior leadership management experience. That's clearly on my uh, bio. People can check into that. I have that. People that have managed budgets in the millions, I've done that. People that have managed large staffs, I've done that. People that have worked with unions, I've done that. People that have been on the other side of this, uh, on, on the labor side, I've done that. People that have been before labor relations boards or administrative boards helping both uh, employees, and I've been on the management side too. I've done all that. So I come with a great mix of private sector skills that will be able to, and I'm going to be respectfully about this, that will actually be able to easily manage the city of Brockton. The problem with our, our city right now is, is that we are using models that are pretty antiquated. Um, one of the suggestions that I've made, and I've made this, that people know, I've made this suggestion for years, Brockton has to stop uh, working as if it's a municipality managed by a board of aldermen. We are a major city in southeastern Massachusetts. One of the uh, ways that I explain Brockton to others is I say that we are basically the capital of southeastern Massachusetts. So we need to start managing our infrastructure. We need a full realignment and reorganization of this municipality. Many roles do not report up to the, the office of the mayor. I think that frustrated the carpet administration. That needs to be changing. So I would like to work with the city council to do some of those organizational adjustments. The other thing too is, and I'm gonna say this, no one's talking about this, a two year term for mayor uh, is something that we need to look at. I think it should be at minimum a three. Uh, and that actually speaks to this question of experience and not have experience and not having experience. And that is to say that uh, if you have someone that is and it's fine. Young and youthful, they become mayor. They surround themselves around people that may be able to help them. That we, quite frankly, I don't think we have time for that right now. I think that the issues in this city are so severe, so acute, that we need somebody on day one, January 1, 2020, to be able to manage the city. So you look at the ages in this race, okay? Respectfully. You got 23. <laughs> yes. You got 71 on yes. one end. Yeah. You got 50s. Yeah, I'm 53. Yeah. Um, Bob Sullivan, I think, is 50. Yeah, yeah. Okay, two 20-year-olds, right. Jimmy and, and, and Jean. Um, when you're talking experience, it's life experience, too, is, it, is, 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 life, as well. Yeah, life experience is, is very, very important. Um, I haven't focused on life experience because uh, I've been really, you know, I, again, I'm coming from a, my management hat. And my management has, just has me thinking about how I would interview you. I'm coming from my HR hat, my labor relations hat, how I would interview and what I'm looking in terms of competencies. And clearly those competencies are derived not only from academics or from work experience, but you are absolutely right, they are derived from work experience. One of the things that I'm concerned about, and I know people are going to probably push back on that, when I look at uh, Mayor Carrera in Fall River, I'm concerned, um, and I, you know, so I, can, I have to kind of challenge people that say that you know, based upon my you know my 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 having briefly my I was in college. I'm out of college now. I have a little bit of work experience. I can take on this municipal corporation from day one. Look at Mr. Carrera in Fall River. It's it's the voters. Thought it was glamorous. The voters thought, "Oh, young guy, handsome, uh, the new age, the, the the Kennedy look for for urban environments." Look at where we are in Fall River. I don't want that to be an issue in Brockton. I don't question the character of any of those that are running. I made I, I made myself very clear with respect to uh, a person not being domicile in the city of Brockton. Uh, 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 Brother Mark Lawton. Uh, I'm clear on that. I, I don't think he should have ran. But with respect to um, the other candidates, not an issue in terms of their personality or their 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 charisma. It's the fact that they're just inexperienced. Well, I remember Ronald <laughs> Reagan in one debate when they were talking about his age. He said, "I'm going to not let my opponent's youth and inex inexperience." Just remember to, the because they were. Yeah. He turned yeah. it around. He, he turned it he around. Did. He did. Now, let me ask you a question. Yeah. I'm looking at your sign. Right. Your slogan, City, City Hall, Hall belongs, belongs to you. Right. Why is that your slogan? Why is that the well, most important thing? That you know where this comes from. From the eight calls that I receive, four of them says, you know, Bishop, we want City Hall to be taken back. And I'm saying to myself, what do you mean? It belongs to you. No, it doesn't belong to us. There's been times that we've gone there, we haven't felt welcomed. There's been times we've gone there that we've felt dismissed. There's been times that we've filed a complaint and people said, ah, you're just complaining. And there's been times that we've gone there where we have felt unwelcome because of our race. And when, when those things were said, 
by those that were not a part of my white callers, I was like, wow, City Hall doesn't belong to all of us. It needs to. Coming into City Hall, you should always feel welcome. Coming into City Hall, you should always have a professional interaction with anyone's there. Folks in City Hall should never, and I love my municipal employees, but they should never think that they're doing the general public a favor. City Hall should belong to all of us. So when you were talking earlier about race and, race and ethnicity yeah, I'm pro that, that, yeah. not being part of this whole thing, it's, yeah. it, it, it has entered the picture. There's Why? been a lot of discussion about right, it. Right. I'm not sure why. Brockton has changed quite a bit over the years. If you look at Brockton with the yeah, waves the of in right. immigration from day one, Brockton has always been it, right. diverse. It has always been. I guess my concern is this. In having, you know, I could give you my professional answer, my based upon what we do in terms of diversity and inclusiveness. I'm going to say this to the audience uh, because you all know that I'm a straight shooter, whether I get elected mayor or not. I think my, my concern is, is that Brockton should be well beyond making anything a, a, a white, black issue. Um, I'm pushing back on people of color that have raised that issue. And the reason why I'm saying that is because, again, majority of the people that called me to, for this run were white. Um, they love the city. They want everyone to be welcomed. I think that we diminish our capacity when we feel that the management of this, this the, the continued management of this, the, the city has a lot to do with race. I don't think so. I think that if the if people of color come out and vote, we are the majority here in the city of Brockton. We will be managing the city of Brockton. That's not a white issue. I, I push back in thinking that anyone should be challenging our white residents. I, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. If we're the majority, we're interested in managing and governing Brockton, as Bill Carpenter said, and people seem to forget that. Mayor Carpenter clearly said that the next mayor of the city would be a person of color. And I know that there's a lot of people out there that are, are following another candidate, but even he understood the demographic change in the city and the fact that the voting population is clearly are people of color. So I'm hoping that makes any sense. Yeah, it does. <laughs> so um, first, first hundred days oh, yes. of a branch administration, Yes. what would that look like? Uh, again, we're going to settle the Lopes case. I'm asking Mr. Lopes to return back to the Commonwealth with his, his attorney. Let's talk about settling this case for a reasonable amount of money. We're not going to give him eight, nine, ten, twenty million dollars. It's never going to happen. We don't have the money. Uh, the second issue is, like I said, we're going to be issuing uh, uh, an executive order to develop the professional office of integrity. We are then going to ask the city council to formally make it into a department. Uh, thirdly, we are going to look at having uh, an inclusionary housing model. My intention is very clear on that. New development going up in the city of Brockton needs to have a below market rent component. Uh, the residents require that. I, what I'm saying to people is if, in fact, you work at Cumberland Farms, Mobile Gas, uh, Alves Market, you should be able to remain in the city of Brockton without three and a half people in your home working. So we need to do that. In addition to that, I'm very concerned about these deals that were made uh, by the Carpenter administration with respect to uh, these developments that are going to be going up. The city council recently approved where some folks were giving 20 year uh, wave, uh, waivers with respect to residential tax, with respect to, yes, residential property taxes. That clearly, what they did was that shift the burden from the developers back to homeowners in the city of Brockton. I don't think a lot of people are aware of that. So we would be looking at those sort of TIFs, et cetera, because uh, that won't be happening in my administration. Yes, we will negotiate. We will have the BRA, economic development, negotiate reasonable deals, but we cannot keep pushing uh, the homeowners in the city of Brockton that have higher taxes. We're going to be looking at the Promise Act. Uh, I'm going to be a, a very strong supporter of the Promise Act. Uh, my, the the uh, delegation that represents the city of Brockton is on that. We need the Promise Act to be uh, passed by the legislature, remembering that it was the, the legislature that, that killed uh, 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 the appropriate amount of funding for public education. So we're going to be working on that. Uh, look, the goal is to unify folks and to give the regular, and, I, and I've said this, the regular Jack and Jill what they need. And people always uh, also keep asking me, well, Bishop, well, we're unsafe. I want people, respectfully, the data does not show that Brockton is unsafe. What the data does show is that there are criminal elements and some crimes that are happening, happening in this city from outsiders that we need to do something about it. We're going to be looking at a police model. I know people see, keep talking about boots on the street. We don't say boots on the street in a majority 
uh, minority communities. That has connotation. I'm going to try to teach people language as we move forward. We, yes, we can have additional police officers, but what we need to do is kind of what of the model that I'm used to. Surveillance is what we call catch and convict. We're going to increase surveillance in the city of Brockton with respect to videos. We're going to ask homeowners to please make sure that you're willing to give us access or to turn over video information uh, because we need to catch these criminals and we have them convicted by DA Cruz. This is what this sort of modeling is all about. On that note, we recently did that when the hatchet wielding You turned assailant, it over your video. We had them in this building Great. to work with the state police and work with the uh, local police yes. so they could clearly see what happened from right. our cameras. And then inside, Thank you. the owner of the cell phone store, Luis Andrade, he had the chilling video of right. the person what, almost yeah. getting the head chopped off, right. okay? I right. think it's really important. I know the Carpenter administration started to roll it out. We have cameras here right. on the outside of the building, but there so needs to be so we, no, more. Not, right, so where we are, and again, one of the things I've said, and people love the slogan, I said it took a carpenter to build us where we are today, but it'll be a branch with roots in the city to move us forward. So we don't push back on a lot of what Mayor Carpenter did. Uh, we are actually going to modify some of it and advance it. And, and again, when it comes to a catch and convict, it's about making sure we get convictions so people know you come in the city of Brockton, you're shooting a gun, you're going to get, I'm not talking about that, that shot spotter stuff that's costing us hundreds of thousands of dollars. I'm talking about I see you on video, we've caught you you're going to be convicted. People need to know if you enter into the city, that the branch administration is going to do maximize whatever we can do in terms of making sure that there is a conviction for your crimes. Let's go to education. Ah, you yes. and I both sit on a school committee. Yes, yes. One of the most important roles of the mayor is to be the chair of the school committee. Right. Uh, Bill Carpenter came from the school committee right. in Ward 5. You're on a school committee now. Right. How do you think that helps, and what are your plans for education in the city, especially with the assault from the charter school? Right. So, you, you, well, you know what my position is on the charter schools, and I know a lot of our, 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 our the audience is, uh, cause some of them support charter schools, so I won't go too in-depth on that. But one of the things that we are going to be doing, uh, if I'm elected mayor, so I'm going to see the chair of the Brockton Public Schools in a, actually a strong position. Uh, I'm going to talk to the school committee members in public session to make sure that we introduce uh, regulations, policies. A lot of people don't realize that school committees manage legislation policy of a particular school district. People don't realize that they think it comes from the superintendent. It doesn't. So we're going to actually be looking at a couple of things. Um, again, a strong chair of the school committee so I can advocate really, really in terms of why haven't we started planning on a new high school? People are asking that question. I don't know why we haven't started doing that. I want to lead the, call, the conversation on that. Why haven't we done something in terms of, on a school committee level, with respect to diversity and inclusiveness? Everybody seems to be talking about it, but no one seems to be moving on it. What are we doing in terms of stopping, stopping the bleeding of the school budget? Why are we talking about layoffs every year? Some of that doesn't necessarily have to do with state funding. I think that we need to do a deep dive into the budget itself to see if there's any wiggle room. Not pushing back on the great work that Kathy did, but I think that there needs to be a deep dive. And one of the other things that I'm going to be talking about, and I know people are going to push back on it. Right now, as you are aware, uh, we do it a little bit differently at Southeastern, but if, in fact, you come before the school committee, people just listen. School committee members don't respond to them. Majority of the people that have called me have asked me why. I've explained to them why. I think we need to actually visit that information to see if, in fact, we can come to some sort of common ground where school committee members are actually asking questions of the public when the, when the public is, is presenting things. This is a new model, but I'm going to tell you something, Mark. It's a new day. It's a new day. This generation wants answers, and they don't want the politics. They want answers, and they want it in their face. So you get elected. Yep. How would you communicate your, your, your policy, your admissions? Yep. You already know how to do TV. Yeah, I do. Okay? <laughs> you do a TV show yep. right now. Would you continue what Mayor Carpenter's done to educate the public? Would you, would you increase it? We, we are, we are, I would, I'm going to actually use uh, Mayor Carpenter's model, at, but we're going to actually enhance it. We're going to do a, a, a few things differently. One of the things they've already, so it was already on my platform to fix the issue of the website. We need to be a lot more transparent here in the city of Brockton. We're going to put the budget online, you know. So there's going to be, and, and the other thing too, I, I'm only bringing what we do in the private sector. We're going to be bringing in scorecards. 
So you're going to be able to say, I called, not only did click and fix, there was a pothole, but you, you can actually connect on a scorecard what the city's productivity has been in terms of responding to potholes. All of that work, public work information, will be now public. We need scorecards, and I've said that for a long time. In order for people to recognize the greatness of the city, you have to be transparent and you have to give them the information. The problem is, and this was the problem, and I'm going to say this because, and I said this to Mayor Carpenter a few times, the problem is Bill had a lot of success, but they never pushed how successful his administration actually was. We're going to change that. How do you answer any of the people that have given you a hard time, criticized you, mocked your credibility, um, both in your religious yes. role yes. and your management role? Well, so in my religious role, I, I, I used to I kind of quote Kennedy, who said that, you know, religion has nothing to do with whether or not, and I'm paraphrasing, whether or not we are fully funding schools, whether we're fighting crime, whether we're dealing with rent stabilization issues in the city of Rockton, whether we are making everyone feel welcome. That's not a religious issue. That's what we should be doing as a municipality. Uh, you know, I, let me just say this on a personal note, and it'll be public now anyway after this. I was, my feelings have been hurt. Uh, my feelings was very hurt when I was called anti-Haitian. You know, I'm a vice president, I'm the last, uh, most recently vice president of Haitian Community Partners. I've been on their board for five years, and that was hurtful. And a candidate allowed that to go on, and it's still going on. You know, we're human. And when we've done the good fight for Brockton, we do the good work for Brockton, it can be hurtful, because that's not necessarily politics. That's personal attacks. So the way I deal with it, I'm a prayerful man. People know what I say about Brockton. I said always say something great about our city, and also I pray for our city. I just ask people to pray for me as I pray for them, and my faith keeps me grounded, and that's the truth. So in terms of your involvement in the community, mm -hmm. I know your biography because I serve with you. Right. You are the VP of Haitian Community Partners. Yep. You're, you're uh, first VP of NAACP. I am. <laughs> You're on the board of directors for the Cape Verdean Association. I am. So half a decade, all of these. Right. So, yeah. so with the exception of NAACP. I was, I was one of the people, year. and I yeah. couldn't serve because my dad was sick. That got asked by two Haitian organizations to be on their boards. Yeah. Two competing organizations, right. I might add. Right. NAACP in Brockton 65 years ago was founded by an African American male I know. and a white Jewish male. A and, former judge. Right, and that's that, what Brockton right, is. That do see you're, you're saying it better than I. And that's what's so puzzling in this election. It's like we have had actually a very strong connections with all of our communities in the city of Brockton, whether it's based on ethnicity or faith. Right. I'm puzzled why there's so much tension, but I'm also happy because in a larger sense, the whites and the blacks that called me to run for mayor of Brockton realize that if anybody can unify us, it's Tony Branch. And I believe that we can do it. And I, I, it's not even, I know that we can do it, and we can begin that healing on September 18th. So this fight for mayor uh, has to do a lot with how much money you can raise. You, there are big and I raised signs <laughs> floating around with people's pictures on them now. Yeah, yeah, when I ran, yeah. the last thing I ever wanted to do was put my picture on anything. It, that's all changed now. Okay, yeah, but that's different. People now. want to connect. They want to see who the candidates right, right, are. Right, right, um, Getting past the preliminary election, yeah. it's coming down to two. There are seven candidates. Yeah, I know. There's going to be two that come up after the 17th. How do you get to the next level if... The money isn't there. How do you get your message out and talk to people? So for me is that I've been doing a lot of door knocking um, and I've been doing a lot of things on social media. Uh, I also want to say that I'm hoping that people recognize um, and you know the Trisha, you know they, I'm always been recognized as Bishop Tony Branch, but I hope when they go to the polls they see Tony Branch. We know this guy. That's the guy that has done this for the community. He's done that. This is the guy on TV. This is the guy that tries to bring us. Together. I'm hoping that that translates not uh, uh, away from this amount, enormous amount of cash that's coming from Boston. Let's be honest about it. The money's from Boston. Uh, I don't know why they want a foothold in our city. I have some thoughts. But uh, bottom line is, yeah, I'm, I'm a broke candidate with respect to running. I'm running as my spirit and my heart 
uh, into this race, and I'm just hoping that people will recognize that. You have an honest guy that's just trying to lead us forward. So I got the five-minute cue. Oh. I want to make sure there's a couple of minutes at the end so you can do your closing statement. Thank you. Okay? Yep. Um, number one issue for Tony Branch as mayor. What would be the number one first thing that is the top of your agenda? No, I'm, I, listen, like I said, I think that immediately uh, with respect to internal control, liability, get rid of the Lopes case. Outside of that, we need to unify the city of Brockton. Uh, so I will be calling for a town hall meeting uh, of this entire city. We'll do it at Brockton High School. People will be able to, uh, uh, and we'll do a series. So this will probably do three series, if I remember correctly. We'll do town halls at Brockton High. People will be able to unload. We will take inventory uh, of their concerns. A majority of those concerns we will score and we'll put them at our electronic scoreboard on the City Hall website and City of Brockton website, and we'll begin a process of dealing with what they're bringing forward. We need to unify the city, and we need to do it fairly quickly for us to move forward. Um, I, from what I understand, the issue of the casino debate is now over. Uh, so we need to talk to Mr. Carney and see what needs to happen in terms of that fairground. Uh, that's uh, an issue that a lot of people have brought to my attention. Uh, so we'll be working on that. Uh, and then, thirdly, we need a high school. We need to talk about public education dollars. I mean, the next generation of leaders are at Brockton High School. When they go to college, get married, I don't want them leaving Brockton. And listen, the goal is for us to remain family. Sometimes family leaves and they go elsewhere. I want people to come back home. I want them to help us develop the city into the next uh, century. That's not happening if we become stalemate on issues of ethnicity and race. It's not going to happen if we don't, or we're not transparent. It's not going to happen if we don't have someone that's really able to lead the city, talk about the, the different mechanisms that have been causing us failure. We were about to close it out. Sorry, I'm so sorry. So I got I'm, two minutes. Yeah. You got about a minute 30, right. 90 seconds. All right. So listen, I, what, my platform is clear. I've gone over it in the last... Uh, total number of minutes that I've been here. At the end of the day, what I need you all to do is to really, really, really look at me as a candidate with a resume applying for the office of mayor. The office of mayor is the CEO of a municipal corporation. I love a lot of them that are running for mayor. I do. You all know that I do. You know I'm talking from my heart. But at the end of the day, if your boss you were applying for a supervisory or management position and you did not have that. Would your boss hire you? Absolutely not. You know that and I know that. What I'm trying to do is to unify us. But in order for me to unify us, you have to know that there is going to be a government that is going to have ethnics and integrity. And, uh, ethnic, yeah, ethnics and integrity, excuse me. And I'm going to bring that to the table and you know that I'm going to bring that to the table. I can only speak from the heart because I don't have billboards. I don't have all these signs that have graffitied our city to the point where I'm going to tell you from a political science, it's so many of them, no one's connecting with them anymore. I am Tony Branch, TonyBranchForUs.org. I'm asking that you contact me. I, okay, I don't have any more minutes. I love you. Contact me. Vote for me, or I'm asking for your vote, and then vote for me. Thank you very much. Thank I'm you, sorry. Tony. I'm sorry for going I know. Make sure the most important thing on the 17th of September is that you go out and vote in yes. this preliminary election. Prove to everybody else that Knox Brockton that we are a city of champions Thank and you. people care about who their elected leadership are. So make sure you go out and vote and that night tune in to Brockton Community yeah. Access for coverage of the election. Thanks for joining us.